Bolt's Block Party is here presented by our friends at High Ally IPA, thanks to Cigar City Brewing. I am Greg Wolf, your co-host here for the Bolt's Block Party, joined by my partner, Braden Coburn. And we are excited to have this guy here with us, one of the new guns on the Tampa Bay Lightning roster, Mitchell Chafee. What is the nickname? Because I wrote a bunch down, and I'm curious if any of these are in the same wheelhouse. I got Mitz, Mitty, Mitchy, MC, Mick, Schaefer, Furs, Chauffeur. Any of those? We've probably heard all of them. Okay. Here. Which <laughs> one sticks in this locker room? Chafe. 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 Oh, I mean, Chafe. I, I figured. Yeah. Like, I was, it, it might evolve. Yeah. Chafe I mean, might evolve. I, we've gotten a few Mitchies. Mitchies. Here, Mitchies. Okay. Yeah. No mix for MC? No, like, no, no. Okay. I feel uh, like Sorelli would be calling you Mitchie. <laughs> so, a few guys have been calling me Mitchie, uh, mostly Chafe. Chafe. Um, like, I yeah. feel like that's not My a middle good... name's Alex, so some guys call me, well, I guess no one here has called me Mac. I was going to say, yeah. MC. Sometimes Mac, so... Yeah, okay. that's about it. Chafe, or though. Maybe we'll throw it to our fans. Maybe they can... Uh, okay. You know, a little, <laughs> they want to vote? Yeah. Yeah. You guys vote. What do you think <laughs> his uh, official nickname should be? But uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to have you here with us. And uh, Kobe and I were just talking before, uh, before you walked in about... Um, you know, your backstory. And that's kind of what we want to get our fans, you know, up to speed with uh, how you actually, the journey from getting from, you know, being a youth and playing four years old and the learn to learn to play program, learn to skate program and how that's brought you here to, to the lightning and kind of get your backstory and, and talk about your journey and let you kind of tell it so that our fans can kind of get a, a good grasp on uh, how, how it took you and in, in the path it took you to get here. Yeah, I think it's been a long journey. I yeah. think a lot of people would say that as well. But, um, no, I grew up starting to play double-A hockey pretty much my whole life in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yep. And then uh, when I was 15, I played triple-A in Grand Rapids. And then 16, moved down to Detroit and lived with my grandparents and played for Detroit Honey Baked. Yeah. Hockey. We so. talked about them. Was that Modder that we talked about played for Honey Baked? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. You, yeah. you know Modder? Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So got... he's a little bit older than me, but I know we've had a lot of guys kind of go through that whole program and there's so many good AAA teams sure. in Michigan, but um, I thought that was a big kind of step in my life that my mom probably wasn't too happy about it, sending her kid away, her last kid away. I don't think it's, <laughs> don't think it's easy for any of the moms, no. right? It's just no. a big step and, and yeah. a necessary step too. You kind of have to leave home to get that better competition and that yeah. training. And exactly. And, but Grand Rapids is now kind of taken off more and more. Their hockey is, has grown so much now that I feel like a lot of kids do stay in Grand yeah. Rapids, but back then you, you, really why did couldn't. you go to your grandparents? Is this because of where they lived? Yeah, was closer they just to the lived in that area. So I just, uh, my grandparents were kind of the first ones to kind of reach out and we were like uh, we're familiar with them and they were happy to have me and, I don't know. We built a close relationship living with them, so it was I it was actually awesome. If you got to build it with somebody, I feel like grandma and grandpa are like the oh, perfect. It was, oh, it was wow. awesome. I would go. I'd go to school, and like say I'd run out of something in the morning or whatever it is. When I'd get home, it would be there. It, every fast, time too. <laughs> They'll bend I would. I would you. never run out of <laughs> any food, anything I wanted. It was. It was That's truly awesome, amazing. Man. So it was awesome. And then from there, I went to the USHL. Yeah. Um, played in Bloomington, got traded to Fargo. With the Thunder. So um, the Thunder yeah. and Lightning. Yep. Did you ever yeah. Think about yeah. That? yeah. Like, no, <laughs> actually, I haven't thought about that until <laughs> now. So hey, dropping gems <laughs> on I, I got to ask you because I don't want to get off Fargo too far, but the Fargo jerseys and the mm. Lightning third jerseys. Yeah. I, have you made that connection? They're super. Yeah. So when I first saw them, I was like, these look very similar to the Fargo ones. Yeah, I recognize these from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, these look awfully familiar so it was good um played fargo and then yeah. ended up going to umass for three years and it was just so talk to awesome. us about why you chose to go to umass being a guy from michigan yeah right? well, and knowing, even before that yeah though, even before college and your commitment to uh, umass you were drafted to the uh, ontario hockey league too right yeah i was i was so actually one of the scouts for the sioux greyhounds he was actually the assistant on honey baked and he really liked me, and um, he actually ended up drafting me. And I, he, I told him, too. I was like, I, I'm probably most likely going to be playing the college route, but, like, I guess who knows and stuff. So they drafted me late, and um, I think by that time, I kind of figured out that I was going to be more of a late bloomer okay. and felt like I needed to go to college to kind of give me those extra years to continue to grow and develop. And oh, that's, and, a, that's a huge decision. To say, yeah, like a lot of guys – kind of get in that spot and, and you know for myself I took the major junior route but my brother he ended up going to union he took the college route and I mm -hmm. think you're exactly right I think it just depends on the player and what you feel comfortable with and like you said if you feel like you're going to be a late bloomer you know college might be the way to go but 
another guy that ended up going to UMass was Kale McCarr, as yeah. you know. Like, you know <laughs> he was my roommate. I, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't call Kale McCarr a, a late bloomer by any means. <laughs> no, but no. You guys were roomies. Yeah, we were roommates uh, from freshman and sophomore year. And, I mean, he's truly one of the nicest guys. It was, it was just great rooming with him and two other guys, Oliver Chow and, and Matt Murray. And it was just it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. We've grown to be pretty much become best friends now. And awesome. I'm going to go to his wedding this summer and go to his bachelor party. I went to his cup party. So it's I mean, we've just grown throughout the years. We still keep in touch all the time. And he's just one of those guys that he's just a friend to me. He's sure. not Kale McCarr, the hockey player, you know, yeah. so it's truly yeah, it's awesome. We had a great group of guys there. Um, we had a lot, we had a really good freshman class come in and kind of turn that whole program around. I think they won maybe five games the year before, and we had thirteen plus freshmen come in, and I think we all played immediately. So, so I mean, again, the the development at that age and and being able to. Um, to choose, like, again, to go. But, again, I want to go back to why you chose Mass yeah, over Michigan. Yeah. Like, as being being a Michigan guy, yeah, so. didn't ever have aspirations to play for the Blue? or like Well, what? so, I, actually, I visited Michigan, and they didn't really offer me. Like, oh. there, was a, there was a few schools and stuff that were interested, but didn't really make offers. And I wasn't – I wouldn't say I was one of the best, like, junior guys. I think I was pretty average in juniors, to be honest with you. And um, I think – I knew kind of going to maybe a smaller school would benefit me more coming into a school where I know I can play immediately and continue to develop. And I actually, our assistant coach, uh, he was at Western Michigan and he was trying to get me to commit there. Okay. And so I was close to committing there. And then the assistant from there, he's like, Hey, I'm going to UMass. Oh, okay. And I'm taking the best commits I have at Western that I recruited. I'm taking them over with me. He's like, come to UMass, like come meet Greg Carvel, the head coach and come check out the campus. Mm -hmm. And if you like it, like we'd love to have you. Amazing. And is, is that intimidating when you're in the class of 13 freshmen or is that kind of like an opportunity you see that as? Cause that seems like a lot yeah. of competition too. It right? is. It's a lot of competition. I felt like I knew going in though, like it was just, I don't know. It's a way that I've always kind of just attacked each day is I know there's going to be competition. I mean, everywhere I've been, whether it's teams or whoever I'm with, there's always competition. And I feel like I can, if I get long enough, I can kind of prove my myself. And I've just been trying to do that. And I think luckily Greg Carvel and the staff there were just amazing. And I did everything I could to work my way up in the lineup and mm -hmm get power play penalty kill and, and do that and they gave me all the chances in the world to become kind of the player i am today and i felt like that was probably the best decision i could have made is going to umass well so. competition too when you're going against kill mccarr in practice yeah. <laughs> right. i feel yeah. like that's gonna make you a, a better <laughs> yeah. player just naturally for sure know, like oh yeah there's a lot we we battled a lot it was the practices there are no joke it's and they're only an hour long, but it's an hour long of just nonstop. Yeah, nonstop, and it's high tempo, and it definitely builds you to kind of become that next like pro you, player. You and Kale, like, did you guys just take time on your own to kind of like work on your game together, or is that stuff you kind of just did? You know. Yeah, I practice? think just after practice, yep. we'd we'd always kind of be working on stuff, whether it's him grabbing him and taking one timers yep. or or me tipping or whatever it is. I think we did a lot of that throughout the. I mean, he's just. I'd be off trying to work on like my skating and stuff that I felt like I needed better. And I feel like he would never work on his skating, but he was just the best skater. It was just, it's, it's incredible. Talent. Yeah. Right. So, so you, you, you offensively, you know, you were really kind of exploded in mm -hmm. college. That yeah. was where you, you know, you were you the leading goal scorer of the big East. Is that right? Yeah. I think, I think it was my sophomore year. I won the hockey scoring title or whatever it was. And we had a really good team. We had a great power play. Um, we had a really good team and like I said, I feel like it was the coaches just kind of giving me a lot of opportunity and I took advantage of it and, uh, continued to, to grow and develop my game. So from, from the college ranks, uh, at UMass, your junior season, you signed a two year entry level contract 
uh, with the Minnesota Wild. And uh, prior to that training camp, you were assigned to the AHL affiliate, the Iowa Wild, for the remainder of that season. Talk to us about your time there. I know you sustained a leg injury, too, so you had to face some adversity, really, for the first time in your career, right? And, and you went through the NHL draft process, and you, not, you didn't get drafted. No. Like a lot of guys in this this, this team, the undrafted yeah. guys, for whatever reason, you know, a lot of these guys just push their way through. And you're one of those guys that, yeah. you know, wasn't picked in the entry draft, but, you know, he forced his way into the door. Yeah. 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 And I think there was a lot of interest going into it. And unfortunately, at the time, I was extremely bummed out. Like, I felt like I deserved to be drafted. And because a I lot know of your I, teammates were being, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Was, exactly. A lot of everyone around me was being drafted. Yeah. And a lot of guys had great opportunity. And obviously, it's awesome. Like, to be drafted is a huge accomplishment. And looking at it now, um just having the options that I did after college was awesome like it was a really cool experience to be able to meet with all these GMs and teams and kind of pick where I wanted to go kind of a blessing in disguise right, right? Yeah. you get to pick your situation exactly exactly so so it was, Minnesota right and so you picked Minnesota why was that yeah um I just felt like it was the best fit I'm you know, just looking at I mean, obviously their depth and, and opportunity was the biggest thing for me. Yeah. I was like, I'll go wherever, I'll live wherever. Like, that doesn't matter. I want to I want to play in the NHL and I want to play hockey. And I want to play in the NHL. Yeah. I'll live in a van down <laughs> yeah. by the river. Exactly, you know, I'll go wherever right? I need to go. Yeah. Whatever gets me to the, to the top of the mountain. Right? Seriously. So that's, I mean, in Minnesota, it was great. It was a great organization. And I was there for three years. And uh, last year, unfortunately, I felt like I started off. I had a really good camp. And and was very close to I felt like making the team and they kind of told me they were like you're you're gonna get a lot of chances this year and unfortunately after I was sent down to mm -hmm. Iowa 10 games later I tore my ACL game. yeah, yeah it, so so last uh last year I tore my ACL and played 10 games of hockey last year right. <laughs> so it was a long process a long year um a lot of lot of rehab just back and forth two times a day um, going to rehab and doing so many different exercises and stuff. And it was a long process, but, um, where did you do that rehab? Did you do it in Iowa or did you go home? Or? Yeah. So I started off, I had surgery in Minnesota, um, started there immediately mm -hmm. doing rehab very soon. And then went down to Iowa, did a little bit of rehab and went home actually to Michigan, um, for a month and a half or so. It was nice that the team let me kind of go home and, nice. and do rehab at home and, and uh, kind of just be with family and stuff. And um, yeah, then from there, I went back to Iowa and just continued to do the two a days of, of rehab and strength and conditioning. And it was, I mean, they have a great strength coach there and, and staff that just helped me out so much. And actually, I started skating at the end of the year and went back up to Minnesota at the end of the year and just did a ton of power skating with uh, their skating coach. Yeah. Well, look, it looks like you've done a lot of upper body too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at it. Like, like, you, you know, the last that. guy that's sitting in this chair that looked like that was like Tanner Janos. So. Yeah, dude, like for real, he's pretty ripped. Man. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of, when you can't do lower body, uh, yeah, you got to do upper body, right. right? So, but that's got to be hard as a young player. Yeah. Like how did that test you? Like what was, you know, what it was is. going through your head? Mentally, yeah. yeah but, mentally it's like, I mean, you're so close, right? You're so close to the NHL, and unfortunately, after that happens, you are you get knocked down, and you're like, ah, am I going to be back to where I was, or am I even going to try and make it back? And I think those questions only kind of popped into my head maybe the first day or two, and then I, was, I stopped feeling sorry for myself and Focused. continue yeah, to yeah. focus and, and just do everything I can uh, each day to, to try and get back to where I was and even better. So I think that was a big part of it. I think a huge part of the whole process was my faith too. Yeah, um, being a Christian mm -hmm. and and just uh, growing closer to God, I thought it is just something that I guess is a blessing in disguise, and it really I guess puts life into into perspective. Sure. Well, so. I don't think it's in disguise. I mean, I think <laughs> yeah. everything happens no, for a reason, yeah, you know, I, and I so. Agree. That, uh, that touched you, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. So at the end of your entry-level contract with the Wild, you you know you left the organization as a free agent, and uh, July 1st of last year, you signed to a one-year, two-way contract with the Bolts, and uh, obviously playing with the Syracuse Crunch, and we've talked to a lot of the guys that have played for the Crunch, but um, talk to us about that. And, like, again, was there a feeling of, like, sigh of relief, like, oh, my God, I still am at that level, and I still can play at, at a major level? Yeah, I think coming into camp this year, I didn't think I was, I didn't, 
I wasn't at where I wanted to be yep. um, coming into camp. I felt like I didn't have a great camp here, and that was a little bit frustrating, but I knew I was going to go down to Syracuse and be able to kind of just really develop my game more and more and get back to where I was and even better. I think the first little bit was uh, you're still trying to kind of get under your <laughs> your feet a little bit sure. and do everything you can strength wise to get back to where you were. And I felt like they helped me out so much. It helped me out just whether it was power skating, strength and conditioning, it's gotta anything be, it's I need. Gotta be tough. Play 10 games in like basically a full calendar year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's tough to get back into even the game yeah. shape. Like it's, Cause you can it's practice different. all you want, but there's when you end of the day, getting into yeah. the game is like kind of what you need to oh, do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to so simulate that. The more games I played, the better I felt. And I think working with their power skating coach, Barb and Randy were huge. They've, they've done it a lot for me and we've gone out uh, plenty of times just to, like on our own and, and she's helped me out with my skating more and more and just being able to look at the game and uh, they've helped me out a ton. So I think just what, what all the theme. tools. <laughs> what those those guys, Barb, she's was, like, yeah. you know, we've, we've heard many guys names. credit her yeah. a lot about, you know, yeah. just the, I guess the resources that, and I wanted to ask you about this is, you know, you were in Iowa, you saw a different organization at, at their minor league level. You saw a little bit of uh, the Tampa Bay's organization at their minor league level. Can you compare and contrast those two organizations and what maybe is similar and what's different about the yeah. two? Yeah, and I liked Minnesota's organization, and, and Iowa was great. I mean, their organization was awesome, but I know Tampa's organization is – they really, they really put a lot of emphasis on their Syracuse team, yes. and they give you so many tools to help you out, and um, you don't see that everywhere. I mean, like tools like what, like uh, power, sk power skating okay. skills. It's, it's rare to have video. a power skating coach there all the time. Got yeah, it, it is. Okay. It's very rare. It wasn't in. We didn't have that in Iowa. Um, there, Minnesota's power skating coach would come down every once in a while, but we really wouldn't have those one-on-one -on -one sessions or, or have that. And I think that's a huge point where guys can develop and guys can grow their game if they just use the tools that they have here. And it's, it's been awesome. I mean, I'm, I would say I'm one of the older guys in Syracuse, which is crazy. Like I felt, <laughs> you were right. saying, you were saying dude, before the show, Greg was like, you're dude, born, dude. you were born when I was graduating college, dude. Like <laughs> I was like 98. I was like, Oh my God, I was just starting my radio career and this kid was just being born. So like, yeah, I just, I feel the game is, is younger now. I mean, no, no knock on you. Cause you played for <laughs> such retired. a long time. I'm, I'm, retired. Retired. Saying, like, I'm just having fun watching these kids. But like yeah. even, I mean, again, we were just at all-star. We're talking about Kale McCarr and I was there at all-star by the way, shout out. Um, but like to see like the Sidney Crosby's and the, and the, even the stammers, like these guys have been playing for so long and then you're like, wow, like how much more am I going to see of these guys, right? So next gen, the yeah. next gen, yeah. I just feel like your generation um, is, you guys are the next generation. So to be able to see the development and see how the game has become younger, uh, it's exciting because you guys are doing stuff that this generation hasn't seen like mm -hmm. and especially i'm the hockey influencers now these kids doing trick shots and like the way they're handling the the, the puck on the stick and doing like it's amazing yeah. you didn't see that stuff like, yeah man, I feel oh like yeah it's, it's a different game now. it's completely changed i'd say i'm more of the old school game I, 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 yeah i mean i shooter i love shooting the puck i mean i love hitting guys i think that's a big part of my game and i'm not going to shy away from that um obviously there's so many skilled guys out there and a lot of these young guys do have so much skill but i think there is room in the game for guys like me that yeah. can play that hard game and i think it's i think a lot of the kind of the new generation has gotten away from it well tossing ottawa defensemen around in the corner and scoring goals that's, <laughs> that's old yeah, school I don't, know, I don't know what's let's new school let's talk about your goal last night i mean that was a, a beautiful setup and i mean take us through that goal like in yeah, I mean, I mean, you're second in the like last ten games. I mean, yeah. it's pretty awesome to see you're coming yeah. Up here. Yeah, I feel like lately I've gotten more and more chances, and I think that's a big part for me. Where capitalizing on these chances is a big chance for me to to stay here and also help the team win. And depth scoring, I think, is a yeah. huge part of teams that can win, especially in the playoffs. And um, no, last night it was. I mean, we had. We had a lot of chances. I felt like our line played really well, and uh, it was just a great play. And You're unfortunately, right yeah, it it's beautiful. a lot of times it's just being in the right areas of the ice and, and having the right timing, and the puck will find you. Where was the puck that your first – we were asking, where's the puck your first NHL 
go. Like, I mean, obviously, I, we saw Glennie pick it up, and we'll ask about that. I want to talk to you about Glennie, <laughs> That was an too, awesome pickup, hey? Did you like, see I that? I literally watched it all again, because, like, as soon as you were se- doing your celly, like, he immediately flipped that puck up and grabbed it and ran over to celebrate with you. And then I was, yeah. and then I saw the backstory and the, and the history, you know, obviously the Michigan connection oh, with yeah. you and Glennie. But um, where is that puck today? Do you have it so, to send it to mom and dad? Is it no, and actually, so they the staff told me they were going to frame it and send it back to me here. So I haven't gotten it back. Okay, but they're working on yeah, it. Yeah, they're working on That's it. So. Do you still have your first puck, uh, your first goal? I think so. I don't know. I think it's my mom's <laughs> house. <or> I don't <laughs> know. Wow. I mean, he's been playing for so long. But, uh, <laughs> and, you know, I know, I know the Lightning, they do a fantastic job of, like, making nice plaques and really yeah. nice milestone things, stuff. milestone stuff. I think mine was just like maybe glued to a you know, <laughs> cardboard box. Board. Or here you, you know. go. Here yeah, you go, kid. But, um, it, and it, nevertheless, it was special. It was special. <laughs> but, but I want to ask you about your game and where you see yourself as an NHL player. What kind of player do you see yourself as in the NHL? Yeah, I think we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, uh, just not too long ago. But I can see myself as one of those depth guys that can help in scoring and help in offense, but is also pretty reliable in the defensive zone or whether you need to kill penalties or whatever it is. I got some second power play time the other night too. I think they've kind of just thrown me in whatever position I need to play and <laughs> I'm willing to do whatever they need. So I think that's a big part of are, are you, are you, you know, just when you get the opportunity, when you get the ice time, you know, that's, that's one thing, but would you say like, you know, you can move up and down the lineup. You know, can yeah. you be a second line guy, third line guy, first line guy? Is that kind of like your goal, your aim? Yeah, I think just throughout the years, I feel like I've done that. Uh, whether it's I'm starting on the fourth line and halfway through the year, I'm on the first line or whatever it is. I feel like I can play up and down the lineup. I feel like I've I got good enough skill to to match with whether it's first or second line players and then can also play a heavy game. I think that's part of my game that I'm not going to shy away from and sure. that I like. So, um, I mean, I love battling and, and just puck battles. I think that's a big part of my game that I take pride in. So when you got called up in December, right. And that phone call comes and then you realize, Oh crap, like I gotta, I gotta travel. Like I gotta make these arrangements. Like, how does that work? Because again, you're not, obviously you're in your world and you're doing what you're doing. And then all of a sudden you get this call and you got to fly and you got to, where, how does your gear get there? Where do your sticks go? Do you, are you responsible to take all that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Team make arrangements, like oh, take man. us through that process. Because I mean, obviously it was an exciting time for you, but I'm curious, like how does, how do you get from point A to point B with all your stuff and things that you need? Yeah. I mean, there's a, so it's the staff here that does pretty much everything. The got staff it. here is unbelievable. Whether it's down in Syracuse or here, they help you out. And they pretty much take care of everything, whether cool. it's flights, yep. um, arrangements, arrangements yep. yeah, any car services, everything you need. So they book, they book all of that. You pretty much pack your bags, and who knows for how long you're going to be gone, right? right? So you could be gone for two days, you could be gone for two months. So it's. You don't know. You don't know. It's always weird I mean, when you check into the hotel and they're yeah. like, "When are you departing?" It's like, like, "I don't know." know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like. Uh, so you pack, hopefully a while, right? You overpack then because you don't know. Like you said, you could be yeah. there for two months. Like I have enough underwear and well, socks exactly. and like. Really, you just need a couple suits and you know, like exactly. you can just kind of figure you it rotate. Out you yeah. rotate <laughs> different shirts. Well, and we've suits. heard about the, the uh, Braden Point like taking his stuff off and leaving it with oh. the suit. And, have you heard about this yet? No. Like, so Pointer um, would come to the rink. It's right? like with, a zipper suit. Like oh, yeah, like, like he literally takes, takes it the off shirt off <laughs> with the, the jacket oh, and yeah. the tie to the side, and then like puts it back on. Yeah. Okay. Just wasn't sure if that was part of your repertoire. My first year, I think I had one suit. I actually had a backup suit, but I had my A suit. I yeah, thought, I thought it was suit. my A suit. Yeah, yeah. And I wore that thing like right to the end of the year. And I remember looking at the the bottom of my pants, like the butt of my pants at the end of the year, and be like, I can see through this, oh you know? Like, They're just I'm so worn out. So worn yeah. out, you know? Just, yeah, yeah. You were making a couple dollars. I'm sure you could have bought another pair of pants, but yeah, I got, I hold that Saskatchewan <laughs> on to me, you know? Like I so make it go a long way. When you find out, you know, you're coming to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and Mm -hmm. the caliber of talent, the Stanley Cup pedigree. um, What have you, I mean, what were, first of all, you most excited and who were you most excited to be playing with, I should say, Um, but knowing you were coming to this organization and the the pedigree, um, talk to us about that emotion and feeling like when you heard that you were gonna be a part of this team. Yeah, I think it's an organization that, like you said, has, has done so well throughout the years and it's just a, it's an honor to be here and be a part of this organization. There's so many good players that 
you grow up watching right. and idolizing like Stamkos and, and Kucherov and all these guys that are just phenomenal players. And I think that's when you first get here, you kind of a little bit stunned a little bit and where you're like, well, you like starstruck a little pretty bit, cool. Right? Yeah. It, 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 I mean, it's pretty cool to be sharing the ice with them. And then you quickly realize like, Hey, like I need to, I need to <laughs> bear down and, and make sure that I'm leaving a good impression here. But this organization has just been top notch and I've loved my time here. And did you, so, did you have a favorite player or uh, what's your favorite player, favorite team growing up? Yeah. I mean, I'd always watch the Red Wings. Red Wings. Yeah. Red Wings. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. So the Red Wings were always my number one team that I'd always try and watch. Uh, we had the Griffins there, the Grand Rapids Griffins AHL mm -hmm. team. Yep. So I'd always go to the games. I was the, that little kid that was skating like in between periods and stuff like that. And Love it. During those games. So. It was pretty you, special. You are Mighty Mites is what we Yeah, have. yeah, yeah, kids. exactly. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Though. So it was, it's cool to be able to kind of work your way up throughout the years. And like I said, it's, I mean, I was never the the top the top guy in, in juniors and, and stuff like that. But if you keep kind of working hard each day and just taking it day by day, then who knows where you can so end up. Did you catch a game in the Joe Louis Arena? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I've caught a few. It was okay. pretty. It's a pretty special place, although it's, I think, what burned to the ground now. Yeah. It's probably yeah. for the best. Yeah, but for sure. <laughs> how, I mean, how how long ago did you know Glenny? I mean, did you guys play together, or did you just no? You were both he's Michigan guys, yeah, right? yeah. He was uh, much older than I was. We actually had the same youth coach when that youth coach was, I believe, playing high school. He was coaching high school gotcha. hockey in Grand Rapids, and then I actually played with his kid um however kid. yeah the okay. coach's kid however many years later okay and he actually got me connected with glennie and that's when i moved down to detroit to start working out during the summers was maybe four years ago or so and glennie was in that group and yeah. i've kind of just learned to uh, i don't know he was always one of those guys that was going to be nice and reaching out and he loved that i was from grand rapids as sure. well so um it was just a yeah cool experience where um, I just kind of followed him, I guess. I yeah. mean, he was always so strong and a beast in the weight room. So I was trying to keep up with him a little bit and um, just uh, follow the older guys that we have a really good group there in Detroit that we all work out together. And I've been there for three or four years now. It's never a bad idea. If you want to be a pro to surround yourself with pros and see yeah. how they do things and see how they act. And, you know, like you said, like, it's hard, it's really hard during the season to work on a bunch of different things because you're playing games and, right. and you're trying to do little things. And like you mentioned with the power skating and the skills coaches, those things are great and grand during the season, but there's just not that much time between games. If you're gonna get better as a hockey player, you really have to utilize the off season to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you're around pros and guys that have been in the game and are working hard and that have that work ethic, it just helps your game grow, right? Definitely. And I think that kind of was the point of emphasis for me was if I go down to Detroit every summer and I surround myself with all, all these pros and all these good guys and go to one of the best gyms and invest kind of in, in myself where I'm going to go pay a lot of money to play or to, to work out at this gym. Like I'm going to kind of see the results from that. And I think it's been a great decision. Like you said, surrounding yourself with, with pros just only helps your game. Who's the strongest guy in the group? I'm always interested to see who the who the bull in the gym is. In the group uh, there. From or in down Detroit, in, in oh Detroit. down in Detroit. Um, oh man, we got a lot of strong guys. There's been a lot of guys kind of mixing in and out, but I think pound for pound, Kyle Connor's pretty strong. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's, he's pro he probably weighs about 180, but he can bit, like he can small. throw around a lot of weight for for how. Uh, Oh, he's a blazing speed. Yeah, oh and he can gosh. just fly. So. so your number, number 41 here with Tampa Bay Lightning. You wore 21 in college and kind of growing up. Um, why 41? Or is that just the number they gave you? That's if you just, got a chance? No, to... it's just the number they gave me. But I actually, I like it. I might uh, I might keep it depending on what happens. If they ever even give me a chance to pick a number, I think uh, I like the number. and. 21 might be tied up for a little yeah, while. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think I can take 21 back. So. All right, before we get into our fact or fiction segment, um, I happen to notice that you have a LinkedIn page. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen a hockey player in the NHL have a LinkedIn page. Was that 
because like in college they preach, you know, you got to set these things up for business and like what, you know, cause maybe if you didn't go that path. So <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was like, I don't think he's posted anything, but no, I noticed you. So is no. that for life after hockey? Are you setting that up now to like for the future? I just wanted to. No, it's from, I went to the business school, Eisenberg yeah. School of Business yep. at UMass. Uh, and okay. one of my classes, they make you make a LinkedIn. Yeah, I figured So that was, the, that was where the LinkedIn came from. You got to keep um, updating it. No, you, you know? should. I, you yeah. should put pictures of you on the ice. And like maybe I should. Yeah, like maybe I should. <laughs> at this point. You're really? networking. Right. Yeah, 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 networking. networking this guy's dude. great. Okay. So, all right. So, Mitchell, before we let you get out of here, we do a segment a segment called Factor Fiction, powered by our friends at High Lie uh, IPA. And basically, it's just these are either true or false. There may be a detail offered to you, so you got to pay attention and just oh, okay. let her know, are these true or false statements? All right, here we okay. go. We kind of touched on this earlier, so I'm sure <laughs> you're going to figure this one out. But during your sophomore year at UMass, you were a Hockey East scoring champion and named to the conference's first all-star team. That is a true. fact. Do you remember what you scored? How many points you put up that season? This is not a test, by the way. It's not like your professor's watching, but I'm just asking if you. Oh, we're not putting man. it on your LinkedIn. No, we're not putting it on your LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we could. Know. We could. <laughs> yeah, you, could. you definitely you probably could. should. The wheels are turning. Do I don't. Know? I do not know. I don't what either. a team guy. I mean, what a right? team guy. I honestly don't know. <laughs> you crushed it though. So that was a memorable year for you. All right. In 2021, you were a Hobie Baker finalist along with UMass teammate John Leonard. I don't believe I was a finalist. You were, but oh. it was 2020. Oh, 2021. Okay. Okay. You and John Leonard both were for on the list, the finalist list for UMass. You were on there. So oh, that's pretty cool. Making them know. All right, all right. <laughs> your first uh, uh, fact or fiction, your first career NHL goal meant more because your Michigan brother, Glenn Denning, was on the shift with you and scooped it. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I yeah, watched it, it again, like how fast and how quick he was to grab that. All right, I got one. Okay. All right. So if you weren't an NHL hockey player or you didn't play professional hockey, you would be a country music star. <sighs> I wish, right? <laughs> I wish. I feel like that would be a dream to be able to play the Can guitar. And No. Oh, okay. That's so the, that's, well, that's the dream, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, I I'm actually learning the guitar, though. It's back in Syracuse okay. now, so unfortunately, I probably lost all – all the things that I've learned, yeah. but so when I tore my ACL, I got a guitar okay. and would just kind of sit there and, and play and try and learn. So that's kind of where I picked it up. You get the calluses on the oh, fingers. Yeah. And yep. Yep. That's great. Okay. So you have a country, future, who's yeah. your country music yeah. uh, go to? Man. Um, I like a lot. Zach Bryan right now is, is pretty hot. Luke Combs, yeah. um, Morgan Wallen. I mean, all those country guys. The younger generation. Of yeah. Country. I mean, I also like the older, older country as yeah. well, but, um, a little trips. bit of everything. Oh, yeah. Of course. Look oh, out, yeah. Tampa, at your local karaoke bar, you know. <laughs> no, day no. off, day off. <laughs> All right, finally, this is the last one. Fact or fiction, Mitchell Chafee, you can name another Lightning player who wore the number 41 before you. Just one. There's been five. Um, who wore it before me? I think it was Edward yes. Belmar. Yep, he's right. That's a fact. So we got it right. Do you know who the other ones were? I was going to say Dumont, but maybe Smitty, Mike Smith, Smith Jimmy Ovalstad, and Maxim Golanov. Oh, there we go. So now you know your history. There you you can put that on your LinkedIn. All right. <laughs> I can put that. I'll post that on my you LinkedIn. Passed. You passed. <laughs> you passed Factor Fiction. Anyways, uh, thank you, Mitchell, so much for, for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, sweet goal again last night. And uh, hopefully you know where that puck is. Uh, hopefully they gave you another one anyways, but uh, we thank you so much yeah. for taking the time to join us and uh, we wish you nothing but success the rest of the way. And we hope we see a lot more of you out on the ice here with our Tampa Bay. Life. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Guys. You, buddy. Appreciate thank it. you to our yeah. friends once again at highlight IPA for powering another episode of the bolts block party. And uh, we'll see you guys very uh, soon. We'll see you guys again very soon. I'm all choked up. Today, <laughs> man.